Hi, my name is Chad and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how to plant and mount these beautiful um, silk plants here. And these are silk. And uh, they look quite real because they're a good product. Uh, I sell these in my florist uh, here in Bay St. Louis. So we've got these beautiful silk plants here mounted or planted in these gorgeous buckets or baskets ready to display in your home. And today I'm going to show you how this is done and uh, I'm going to bring this closer to the camera and show you that uh, these uh, have moss inside uh, just like the real, a real plant and it looks very real. Uh, you really have to get up on this plant to, this is a red cordyline by the way, and you really have to get up on this plant to really see that it's not real, in fact, that it is an artificial plant. Um, and this is a ponytail plant here, or a ponytail tree. Uh, that's also silk, and I'm going to bring this closer to the camera because it's quite unique as well. Um, now the, the bark on here is plastic and they've created this to look quite real. Now I've noticed on this particular item that you can see a seam here where they uh, molded this part of the, of the uh, and on this side as well. Now I've done ceramics and in my opinion this could have all been removed uh, before this hardened. Uh, so obviously they didn't want to take the time to do that. It's uh, I think it's a good quality plant other than that right there. Uh, if you look at this plant from a distance, you cannot tell this is not a real plant. It's got great foliage. And I've, once again, you see the moss inside. Um, now I'm going to show you how this is actually mounted in here. And see, now this is a, um, a paper mache container that you can get at any florist. They're quite cheap, a, a dollar. Dollar fifty at the most, two to, two bucks, and then this is um, this moss just lifts up as you can see, and the ponytail plant is actually mounted in plaster of Paris inside of this paper mache container. Now you might think, oh no, paper mache, that's very weak and it's not going to last. That's not true. These paper mache containers are built to last quite a long time. I mean, uh, I've used them over and over again. Uh, they don't lose their shape. They, they will hold water and, and so they're quite strong. Um, and so this is what we use them in in the florist world. I've made these. They've lasted for years and years and years in the paper mache container. So don't be afraid to use the paper mache container. They're, they're very strong. They last for a very long time. Years and years and years. So uh, this is what we're going to learn today is how to mount your uh, artificial plants uh, in, in plaster of Paris to make them more permanent, uh, a more permanent, it's quite heavy. So this plant um, is not going to fall over uh, very easily. Uh, it, they're, they're quite heavy once this is made. So uh, I think that they, they make a great plant. Now today we're going to uh, do something quite different. Uh, I'm going to show you, we're going to mount um, bamboo. And here's the bamboo here, and I'm going to go back here with it so you can see the actual length on these. Um, these are eight foot, eight foot bamboo trees, or limbs here. Um, they actually do look like fishing pole, like real bamboo. I'm going to bring this closer to the camera so you can see. This is a very good quality uh, company that I, I get these from. I'm not going to mention it on camera because of copyright reasons, but it's a good quality I use. And as you can see, it looks just like a cane pole. There's the tag there, whoops. Uh, so let me remove this tag right now. And that way there'll be no copyright problems here. And there we go. So now that that's off, I just want to show you this is a very good quality plant. I just love it. Uh, we're going to bend all this and shape it into uh, the way it should be, natural 
uh, you want to bend and shape your limbs. Uh, we'll do that once the tree is mounted. Um, once again, this is an eight foot, these are eight foot branches. And I think it'll be quite nice. Now, as you can see, it's going to be this is kind of naked at the bottom. So I'm going to, I'm going to mount these in. Uh, oh, this is uh, a uh, 12 inch container here. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill this full of plaster of Paris and uh, mount our, our trees in this like so. And these will be put in there just like that. Okay, and also today I'm going to also mount, um, this is called Fiddle Leaf Fig. And I thought today I would mount this as well in some plaster and show you how that's done. So I'm going to make a Fiddle Leaf Fig bush uh, and we're going to mount that in this other mache I have here. We're going to mount these right in here like so. And I'm going to make a fiddle leaf fig tree or bush, uh, if you will, today as well. And we'll show you how that's done as well. So, let's get started on our plaster of Paris. Okay, and for my bamboo, I think I'm going to use my chandelier over here to uh, tie the bamboo up with so it can stay um, stable while it's drying in the plaster. I'll show you that right here. I'll show you my little chandelier here um, hanging up right there. Uh, just zoom in on that, make sure that's that chandelier I'm going to use to tie up my bamboo with and just let it let the uh, uh, have the uh, uh, the bottom of it there on the floor and, and then tie it up to the chandelier and that way it can stay uh, steady and uh, stable until the plaster dries and right here I'm going to try to stabilize my fiddle leaf fig right there in that container with those two chairs. Hopefully that will work out where I can wire them up some way so those chairs will stabilize the uh, foliage uh, upright till the plaster dries. Alright, so when you're handling plaster of Paris you want to be sure to um, cover your skin. And I'm going to use some gloves here. Uh, some plastic gloves I have. You might want to choose to do the same thing. Uh, it is poisonous. Uh, you read the label on it before you use it. And um, you just want to just take precautions. I mean it may not bother you. It probably doesn't bother everyone. And this is a mask you want to uh, wear too while you're handling this stuff. You don't want to breathe it in either. These are just some cheap face masks you can get at any uh, hobby store or hardware store. All right, so plaster of Paris mixes like this. Kind of like rice. Uh, two parts. Paris, two parts plaster, Paris, <laughs> yeah, uh, two parts plaster to one part water is the way that goes, that's kind of like rice, it gets two parts water to one part rice, uh, so just the opposite of your rice recipe is your plaster of Paris recipe, so two parts plaster to one part water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this container up, we're going to start with this one, uh, uh, half of this container, I think, is about. Let's see. I'm gonna. Have, I have a gallon of water here. I'm gonna pour it in here just to see. Um, okay. So half of that, yeah, is a gallon. So that's perfect. So that's what we want. So this 
mache container. You could get it any florist. Uh, it's called an 8J. It's the size of it. 8J. So it holds two gallons of water. So there's one gallon of water, uh, or it holds two gallons, I should say. So we're going to fill it up with two gallons of plaster, which I have right here. Alright, so here we go. We're going to mix this up real quick. I think I'm ready for my plaster and my trees to be mount it so we're going to start pouring the water in Keep stirring this and stirring. Just like making a gravy. Just stir, you want to stir all the lumps out. Make sure you get water all the way to the bottom of your container. Just keep stirring. It'll start getting thicker and thicker on you, like a gravy. Be sure to scrape up everything on the bottom that could be dry mixture still, dry plaster. Bring up any pieces like that. Make sure it's all, all the lumps, all your lumps are gone. Just keep stirring and stirring like a big cauldron. Okay, so we're ready for our second batch of plaster. And I've got it poured up right here. And here we go with the water. Okay, we're all done with our plants now. We've got them uh, propped in our plaster. They're drying. Hey, get down, Coco. So now they do require 24 hours to dry in that plaster. Get away from there. Hey, hey. And so we'll come back and check on these tomorrow and finish decorating them out. Okay, so we'll see you tomorrow. Hi, it's been 24 hours and my plants have been planted and mounted in my plaster of Paris right over here. And now it's time to check them, make sure they're completely dry and fluff them out like this plant here and this one here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to this, the moss right there we're gonna use to cover our plaster with. I'm going to show those to you right here. Here's the first plant. I'm going to take him move our chairs away. That looks nice. And I'm going to bring the plant over here on the table. Whoa, that's heavy. Oh, that thing weighs about 50 pounds. So you don't have to worry about it uh, 
falling over on you or blowing over. Uh, so, am I cut off over here? Can you see me okay? So, here we have our plant. Looks nice, huh? Came out, this is all nice and hard, like concrete, that's what you want. And um, you should want to be sure to fluff your um, foliage out on your silk plants. Uh, just to give it more structure and uh, a lifelike look. Uh, every branch doesn't have to be exactly the same. You want some indiscrepancy. You want some weird bends in your branches because that's the way nature is. It just doesn't. Nature just doesn't grow perfectly. So. You want to give your branches some weird shapes and bends that might be a little out of the ordinary. Make sure your foliage is all going the right way. And that's good. And so. Good there. All right, so what do you think? That look okay? I have a basket here. And you can mount this, I mean, you could place this in anything, a pot, a uh, ceramic container, a ceramic pot. You could get at any of your uh, garden stores. So uh, with that said, I'm gonna use this basket here. And although that didn't <clears throat> fit it completely where it went all the way to the bottom of the basket, it's still it's resting there right here on the lip of the basket because this is a, 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 it looks to be like a, almost exactly the same size. So it looks like this basket might be not the perfect size for it to go down inside of the basket. Which is okay. As long as it's sitting there, we can cover that up with moss. And now you could use you could use Spanish moss out of your yard or off your, the trees in your yard. If you live down here in the south, uh, Spanish moss is pretty much a part of our everyday. Uh, uh, foliage down here. So, uh, we use it, I use it, I own a florist so I use it every day. Uh, this Spanish moss has been treated because bugs do live in this Spanish moss in the trees outside. Uh, especially what they call chiggers, red bugs. They live in this and they will get on you and uh, and before you know it you'll be at the doctor trying to get rid of them. So. When you, if you take Spanish moss out of your yard or out of your trees in your yard, uh, all you need to do is microwave it. You can throw this in your microwave for one minute, okay, and that will kill any bugs, red bugs, chiggers, mites, spiders, anything like that in here. Uh, one minute in the microwave will just zap them and get rid of them. So I would suggest doing that if you use it out of your yard. Uh, if, you, if you don't want to get it out of your yard, you can go to any florist and get this. Uh, I'll sell it to you if you want to buy some from me. Uh, it's very inexpensive. Uh, so keep that in mind if you want to uh, do this at home, which you know is really a great way to save some money. Uh, for instance, you could buy this, these silk branches uh, from your hobby stores, and you want to always get a good, uh, good silk company, uh, something that's going to last a while. Um, there's just like anything else.
there's your cheap variety of silks and then there's your more expensive variety of silks. Try to always go for your more expensive ones only because they're going to last longer, they're going to look better, they'll look more real. Um, that's what you want. You don't want to do make a silk arrangement like this out of some cheap silks that's not going to look fantastic because it's just too much time and effort to put into this. Um, for your cheaper type of silks that just don't look that great. So keep that in mind if you're going to do something like this. You want to use the best quality silks you can get um, just because you want this thing to look real and you want it to last a long time. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get our moss in here. Alright, that looks good. And all you need is enough to cover this uh, uh, container here, just so it looks a little more realistic. So, um, <clears throat> it actually looks like there's soil in there. And I think that's good right there. And then we have enough left over, I think, for our other plant. So, there's our fiddle leaf fig. And just bring this over so you can see that up close. That looks pretty good, huh? I love it. I think it looks great. Go around here. And there we have our fiddle leaf fig all mounted and planted in a basket. And I think it looks fantastic. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and set this down here. Oh, that's it. And that's what you want. You want it to be heavy, so it's nice and sturdy. It's going to last a long time. So now let's bring the other plant, which is my eight-foot bamboo tree, and it's right here. Get that. loosen the top here where I had to tie it up here with some wire just to secure it overnight. I want you to see the top of that and the bottom of it. And I'm going to fluff this out um, right now. I'll show you how that's done right now. Just want to bend your uh, branches down and fluff them out. These all have wires in them, so they can be bent and shaped to any desire. If it's leaning too far to the back, you can straighten it out. Bend it the way you want it to go, just so it'll do what you want it to do. Okay, so we have our plants all mounted and planted in our plaster, and I cannot wait to see how these look in my house. So I'm going to go set them up, and then I'll be back to show you what that looks like. It's going to be awesome. Here's my 8-foot bamboo tree in the corner of my home. I love it. Doesn't that look nice?
Very beautiful. Love it. All right, here's my ponytail plant. And there's my fiddle leaf fig tree. That's Coco's chair, by the way. And then right over there is my cordyline. Fiddle leaf fig, cordyline. All right, and there you have it. So don't be afraid to get those plants and mount them yourself. Get you some plaster of Paris and oh that's beautiful get you some foliage from your hobby store plant it yourself in your plaster of Paris